Hello, my friends of Battery Labs. My name is Saul Montoya. Please welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial will be about the simulation of impermeable walls with um, um, will be the simulation of the impact of impermeable walls on groundwater flow with mud flow and horizontal flow barrier. Okay. So what we are going to work with is the HFB uh, package. So uh, let's show, let me show you the package. So we are going to create a new model in Modflow 6. So, I mean, this will be, um, let's say that it will be 20, 20 of 50 meters each. That we will have, the, th the total thickness will be 3 meters, and this is okay. So we are going to represent um, we are going to represent a regional flow. Okay, let's go to model, package and programs. And then here in flow package we are MPF, but we are going to use the horizontal flow barrier that according to the documentation it has been in mod flow long time ago. Okay. And then we are going to boundary conditions. Um, we are going to use the and it also it also acts as a boundary condition. In, in fact, okay, so act, we are going to use general head boundary uh, GHB. Okay, solvers. Mm, okay, and post processor we are going to use Modpad because we want to be sure how this how is the retaining walls how are the retaining wall um impermeable wall, walls uh, conceptualizes or is what the flow barriers are working okay so this would be bad lines and stop at termination points okay that's it great okay so what else okay let's go to here uh Let's go to layer groups because um, I want many layers here. Uh, since I want a better definition, I I want a better definition on the on the on the path line. So that's why I want. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I can find noisy results, something like that. So I I think that it will be better to have more more layers. And then you can add more layers here. Okay, so I will divide it everything by three. Okay, great. So here we have our three layers. Okay, uh, let's go to model. Let's go to layer groups. No, layer groups is already done. Time we are going to work on a steady state. No problem on that. Yeah, okay. And then let's uh, let's go to data sets, the data sets and required and hydrology, everything is active. On cell type, we are going to define that case layer, that the first layer, uh, in this case, it will be the from number one to six, will be, because we are talking about nine, we have already nine layers. I mean three lay three aquifers, but nine layers in the end. So one, one, one. So this is the first layer, the second layer, and the third layer zero, zero, zero. Okay, great. Kx, Ky, Kz, initial head will be zero. <laughs> Close. Yes. Okay, great. So let's have a regional flow. Let's see that here goes, we have a flow that goes from right to left, from left to right. So here will be the GHB East or oh, West. That is called, I don't have any color. And uh, this will be in the first aquifer. Mm, that's great. 
uh, this will be a GHB and this will be the water level will be just half a meter below surface. So it will be from zero to one, boundary head will be zero minus zero point five and the direct and the conductance will be close to the the same as the hydraulic conductivity. Okay, and then I'm going to down four layers. So just to locate it in the second, I will be located on the second aquifer. And here I will put another layer. GHB is. Mm -hmm. And this is from the aquifer bottom, so it will be on the, yeah, as you see here, it will be on the second aquifer. Yeah, that's why we have download four layers. And this will be uh, a GHP. And here, <coughs> it will be minus 10.10. .10. So it will be, the, the water level, it will be minus 0.10.10. .10. Minus 10.5, 10.5, and this is direct on 0 0.01. Okay, the same value of hydraulic conductivity, but in that, but in fact, it's not. Yeah, let's work with it. Okay, great. So. Yes, so here we can save our project, so just save our projects where we are going to save, to save it. Mm -hmm. So we say horizontal, uh, no, impermeable walls with mod flow HFP, okay. And then let's create more here. You will get this, but this these files don't work. More than one. Okay, great. So let's run this, and then let, after that we are going to insert the horizontal flow barrier. So if we run it, okay, we have some warnings. Check out ah, this is the your reference data. Actually, not that much. Monitor, we see that max HF, uh, let's see, it has an issue here. Model, package program, mod flow package. Ah, okay, okay, okay. There is a problem because we have selected, but actually we haven't run the model. So, and this is, I mean, if you select it, at least you have to insert a boundary condition, but in our case, we are not going to insert any of these conditions. Yeah, we will run like this, save, and run. Okay, and let's see, the regional flow is 13 liters that is going potentially from the west to the east, okay? okay? So just to show you which are the ISO lines, okay, this is the normal flow, and I can show you as well which is the water table. Okay, so this is the water table. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay, so this is the normal. This is the normal groundwater flow, um, and then we are going to insert our horizontal flow barrier. Okay, just to remember that 13 liters per second are actually flowing from uh, left to right. Okay. So let's insert the let's insert the horizontal flow barrier. So let's go to package and programs. Let's 
insert the HFB, and then we are going to put a impermeable wall here in the middle. Yeah, so here we have an impermeable wall, but in this case it's going from the upper aquifer bottom to the middle aquifer bottom, but I want to go from model top to the middle aquifer bottom, yeah, because I want to that be that will be intersecting the first two aquifers, okay, while the third aquifer is not intersected, okay, and this will be the impermeable wall, okay, and here will be our FHB that we have one time because it goes from minus one to zero. The barrier, and this is comes the barrier thickness. Why? Because, and this is because, it has, it needs to have a, a hydraulic conductivity. So in the end, it will be less permeable, but it cannot be impermeable. Okay? So in this case, we have to, we need to put a thickness. So let's see that if we are working with a pile wall, what is a pile wall? Okay, so this is a pile wall. Yeah. Okay, so I think that it will be 0 0.3. Yeah. Or, well, maybe it can be higher. Like 0. Point yeah, 1 meter, yeah. And the hydraulic conductivity, which is the, I mean, and this is a very concept, which is the hydraulic conductivity of this? Let's say that it's really, really low. I mean, let's say that it's 110 to the minus 10, yeah? 110 to the minus 10, yeah? Okay. And then uh, there are some adjustments if you have inclined walls. I mean, not inclined, but if you go to the commentation, this is the paper. And then there are some fancy adjustments where, I mean, what is what is the purpose of the horizontal flow barrier is that actually is, you are not required to have a smaller discretization in order to, in, I mean, if you were by another discretization approach, maybe you will tend to, to decrease the cell size in order to in, to put a value of low k, yeah, that it will be simulated your impermeable wall. But in this case, you are actually not required to use uh, to decrease the discretization because the impermeable wall will be installed in between your cells. Okay, so it will be in between your cells, and uh, and flow will flow from this cell to this cell, take into account that here there is a permeable wall, okay? So take into account this, uh, the hydraulic barrier conductivity, uh, you have a really low uh, conductivity on the wall, okay? And then, as I told you, you can have, I mean, if your object is inclined to the act to the act, actually will be distributed in between uh, horizontal and vertical or parallel to x to the axis x and to parallel to axis y okay okay <coughs> okay so here mm -hmm. Okay, so okay, so we are going to run this once again. There are some process more bad warnings that I just put. Okay, so and for thirteen liters per second actually has decreased not much, just to twelve point ninety two. 
because this is on a steady state, I mean, the, it would be much different if you are working on uh, on transient conditions, okay? Yeah, and actually, uh, what we will see what is going on if you put, we will see what is going on if we put this impermeable wall in this model, okay? So if we, okay, if we, Uh, if we plot the, we are going to import the data. Mm -hmm. I'm going to data, delete data visualis, delete more results. And here I open the PhD as control grid. And then this is the impact of the impermeable wall. Okay, so actually you don't see that much impact here or what does it mean that on the steady state flow conditions the the use of the the use of this retaining wall in the in the in 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 the long term actually won't uh, the water will rise on the other side the water will rise on the other side eventually and to a value that is similar to that when you don't have any wall okay however let's prove that this wall is actually diverging i mean that water is not going through the wall okay because we want to assure i mean you, you don't see this but we want to assure that the flow paths are not going through the wall because that that will be against the hypothesis that you have impermeable wall. Okay, for that, what we are going to do, I'm going to select take this here. I'm going to install a I'm going to the top here. I'm going to install a small part where I am going to send a particle tracking from this. So here uh, this will be particles. Okay, and this will be on the first layer, and here will be mod path, initial particle displacement, and it will be come from here, mm -hmm. and then here I can export mod path input files. Yes. They told me that the NPM is working. I will close all this. Okay. Yeah, it's working. And here is the it has worked. Okay, so with that, I go here. And I won't leave it. Chip. And this is what is going on. As you see, as you see here, and as you see here, water is not going. Is I mean, first of all, the impermeable wall is not applying through the whole extension of the. The impermeable wall is not applied to the whole extension of the cell. It's actually on the interface, and here in, it has selected this interface, yeah, because it's because the object is close to that interface. Okay, that's why it has selected this interface. The second thing is that flow is not going through the impermeable wall, but it will be the um, is. It's taking this direction, okay? The third, the third point is that the reduction of flow, I mean, of the total flow that goes of the total regional flow is uh, is minimal, 
okay? And the fourth thing that we have to assure is that the that the model works, that the horizontal flow barrier works great on more flow, okay? On model muse, yeah, it's well implemented, and I I have never I have never used it, but seems to be a, such a great great package. Okay, so that will be everything from me for today. Thank you for following us. Ah, just a small reminder, uh, just to tell you that we are, and this is a company that is funded by you. Okay, what this means that is funded by you, that we sell online courses, and um, and if you take one of our courses, you are actually funding our all our research available posts that we post uh, that we put on the internet. So if you want to contribute with us, just sign into some of the courses that we have. You can make your payment through your credit card and take these courses that are really applied and the level we we are sure that the level of education that we, you are going to get is of high quality and and is the best option that you will find on the internet. Okay, so thank you for this and hope to see you in coming tutorials. Bye bye, have a great day.